rarely can a player dominate junior tennis, achieving elite national status, turn pro at 18, win multiple tour titles, all while becoming one of the best players in the world. But then again, there's only one Robbie Ginepri. You would be hard pressed to find someone that has the credentials that Robbie has. And he's got the most decorated career of probably any player in the history of Georgia. Robbie is the most deserving player that we put in the Hall of Fame in 50 years. Ginepri was born in Fort Lauderdale, Florida and moved to Marietta at an early age. He was introduced to tennis at five years old when his parents played Alta. He would hit against the backboard and then watch while they played. He then started to compete too, and it wasn't long before he found his own success. Ginepri climbed the rankings quickly and soon gained a national prominence as a junior. He was the best junior player to ever come out of Georgia. He won a ton of tournaments, you know, from 12 and unders to 18 and unders at a state, southern, and national level. We would have drills at 9 o'clock in the morning on Saturday morning in the middle of the winter when it might be 10 degrees and Robbie was always there on time and he never complained. He was tough. During the summer, I made sure that we practiced like at two o'clock in the afternoon during the heat of the day because I wanted to make sure the players were tough. Robbie was tough. As a teenager, Ginepri was turning heads nationally, but still found time to start at Wheeler High School in Marietta, where he played number one singles all four years. Playing at Wheeler gave him the outlet of having a lot of fun and still just having success with every match, but being with his friends and being able to have that team aspect of playing. You know, a lot of, a lot of times when you're in your junior career, it's just me, myself, and I, and doing it by yourself. But, you know, with the team aspect of it, I think that, that created a little bit of fun for him. With Ginepri's early junior success, it seemed like he would be a Division I recruit until a series of career-changing results altered that plan. In 1999, Ginepri won the USTA Boys 16 and under national title in Kalamazoo. The next year, he won the Easter Bowl and made it all the way to the U.S. Open Juniors Final, where he then lost to Andy Roddick. Having success at the, um, at the U.S. Junior Open, um, I think that was a big catapult to him saying, okay, maybe I can do this above and beyond college. In 2001, at just 18 years old, Ginepri decided to turn pro. That was a tough decision because his, both his parents are very academic, but he had too many opportunities. When you get to the finals of the US Open Juniors and you're in the main draw in doubles and all, I mean, there's a substantial amount of prize money right there that you're looking at. And so we started talking to agencies about what he could earn out there as opposed to going to college. And the numbers that they were talking about were substantial. And so it, it was it was really, it's kind of an easy decision, but Robbie was, was simply ready. His skill set was so good that going to college to me would have been pointless for him. As a pro, Ginepri found early success as he won a round in the 2001 U.S. Open before falling to Roger Federer. By 2003, Ginepri became the first Georgia men's player to earn a year-end top 30 ATP Tours singles ranking after he made the quarterfinals at three ATP Masters events, including Indian Wells, Miami, and Cincinnati. That summer, he would advance through two rounds of the United States Open. I think that the success that he had at some of the Masters series that he got into, I think he got wild cards into him and he had some success. That really gave him a lot of confidence to realize that he could play with the best guys in the world. Ginepri's best year came in 2005, when he defeated Andy Roddick in the ATP Masters Series Final in Indianapolis, and later beat Marat Safin in Cincinnati. At the Indianapolis event, um, I think that's where he found his momentum. Um, he had a big win over Andy Roddick, um, which really boosted his confidence, and from there he won the, went on to win the tournament. And from that point forward in 2005, that's when he had his greatest stretch. He entered the U.S. Open ranked number 46 in the world, but unseated. He scored successive five-set victories over Tommy Haas, Richard Gasquet, and Guillermo Coria to get to the semifinals. But his run would come to an end when he lost a five-set marathon to Andre Agassi. 
Ginepri was the first player in history to play four straight five-set matches in a Grand Slam tournament. He was also one of only four Americans joining Andy Roddick, Andre Agassi, and Pete Sampras to reach the U.S. Open semifinals during the 2000 decade. Yeah, I think that goes back to how mentally tough he was and how well he was conditioned. I mean, playing that, that amount of tennis in a, in a Grand Slam like that, you have to have that mental toughness. You have to have that conditioning. And I think that, um, you know, that's, that's a tribute to what he, how he worked. Ginepri would play on tour through 2015 and finish in the world top 100 ranking seven times. His career was also highlighted with a spot on the 2004 U.S. Davis Cup team, for which he became the first U.S. rookie to win a match after trailing by two sets. Four years later, he represented the United States in the 2008 Olympic Games in Beijing. I think as a player, you know, being able to play for your country, especially towards the end of his career, playing in the Davis Cup in the Olympic is, is a kind of a dream come true for every player. To be able to play for your country meant everything to him. Um, to have a chance to go and um, compete under the flag, um, I don't think it, he, he could have been any more proud. Ginepri's pro career was highlighted with victories over 12 top 10 players, including Andy Roddick, Murat Safin, and Juan Carlos Ferreira. I mean, I think having one win over a top 10 player in any pro's career is incredible, but for Robbie to have 12 top 10 wins in his career speaks of his talent and his ability and his greatness. After retiring from the tour, Robbie opened Ginepri Performance Academy, and he is currently working as a private coach for ATP Tour Pro Mackenzie McDonald, a world top 75 player. Ginepri also coached top 20 player Francis Tiafu. I believe Robbie um, is a much better coach than I ever anticipated, and um, I think he's done a great job. Um, with the players he's been with, and I think he'll continue to do that going forward with whoever um, he spends time with. Now at the age of 40, Ginepri still plays occasionally. Recently, he won three singles titles on the Champions Tour back in 2020, beating old rivals Andy Roddick and James Blake. Congratulations to Robbie Ginepri, a 2023 inductee into the Georgia Tennis Hall of Fame.